Hello, welcome to Western Political Thought, uh, number one, PS223. I am the, the instructor for this course, W. Wesley McDonald. Uh, you may have heard that I had something of a medical emergency earlier uh, this summer, which means that I will be unable to make it to class for the first several weeks of class. As a result, we're going to be doing a, a kind of an experiment here, and that is offering the courses um, on Blackboard uh, virtually with videos. Um, these video clips will be broken up into uh, seven-minute segments. You can watch them at your leisure, but uh, I expect you to keep pace with the, the readings in the course. So you should um, you can watch them whenever you want to. Um, uh, each clip I say lasts no more than seven minutes and then you move on to the next clip and you try to digest as many of them as uh, you are able. The um, clips will parallel what you're doing in the textbook, um, what you're reading in the textbook, and with the um, PowerPoint demonstrations they are a description of the PowerPoint uh, demonstrations. Uh, now, um, I um, expect you to um, um, follow along with these, and um, I will move from page to page and try to explain what we're uh, talking about here. Um, this is a, um, we we'll begin with course expectations. The purpose of Western political thought is to examine some of the greatest minds in the Western civilization from Plato through Marx, uh, but well in this segment it will only be through Plato through the Renaissance, which means uh, Machiavelli. We're going to look at the development of political ideas from uh, uh, the origins of, of political philosophy in ancient Greek uh, through the, the period we call the Renaissance, which occurs in about the 16th uh, century. And we're going to look at the uh, fundamental works of political thinkers and uh, examine them uh, critically. Uh, you will be able to discuss some of these ideas in the blogs, uh, which I'll establish discussion boards for you. And um, then um, we will um, uh, go from, uh, uh, you can debate and discuss and argue about them, and then I'm going to set up some response papers for you to write from time to time. And then you'll have um, written uh, quizzes and um, examination papers. What I hope to do is introduce you to some of the great literature of uh, Western political thought, in addition give you, uh, giving you some insights um, into the nature of politics and uh, helping you to, to think a little differently about politics. Most people have very strong emotional commitments to their beliefs, but rarely sit back, back and, and critically uh, self-analyze um, uh, or, or critically analyze their own opinions and why they hold those opinions. Um, uh, we tend often, because we don't uh, understand our assumptions, to uh, shout past each other. Um, I may not change any minds in this course, but at least I'm hoping that uh, as a result of uh, our discussions, you will better understand and be better able to defend uh, the positions you, that uh, you take and better understand why people take other um, contrary positions to yours. Um, obviously, memorization is not enough in this class. You must actually try to understand the material. Just trying to memorize and repeat back what I say to you uh, won't help much because I'm going to have you apply the, the ideas that we study in this course in, in unique fashion. So I'm interested in whether you are comprehending what we're talking about, not just memorizing dates and names um, uh, and, and bare facts. Uh, the syllabus that I, um, which I will discuss in a, which is has been discussed in another uh, video clip, um, is your study guide. This class, and um, it will help you um, 
uh, it outlines the course and gives you an idea of what topics we will cover when. I also have a study guide which I have also posted in Blackboard and you can use that to um, go along with the courses with the course and try to answer those questions as you do the readings and listen to the lectures and try to answer those in the blogs and um, to get a, a, it's a it's a way of, of assessing yourself to see um, how well you're doing you can uh, post your answers to those questions on, on the blogs and then try to critically uh, respond to each other's uh, um, attempts uh, in, in the blogs. So look at the syllabus as well as my study guide uh, as um, well both the syllabus and the um, study guide of terms and uh, questions are intended to help prepare you for the examinations I have in class. And then I'm going to give you a, a list of, um, send to you a list of, of uh, response paper topics and I'm going to ask you to choose two of those which you will use to um, uh, uh, you'll choose topics, two topics on different political theorists to um, and then um, when the date comes and when we discuss these ideas in class, you'll submit your um, response papers um, uh, to me and turn it in and I will evaluate them and uh, return them to you with a grade. Okay, this will complete the section number one of the, of the introductory uh, lecture. I will end here and then uh, create another uh, video clip where we deal with these uh, what I call the perennial questions of politics. Bye-bye. Hello again. We're now dealing with a section we call the perennial questions. These are questions that all people who think about politics uh, deal with in one way or another. Um, every political philosopher we'll look at will touch on these questions. And if you try to determine um, where they stand on these issues, it will help you uh, to a considerable extent understand um, exactly uh, what their um, position is on a whole host of issues because you can sort of connect uh, people's position on one um, uh, issue and with their position on another issue. Now the first issue that uh, we're, we deal with, or first question is human nature, what we refer to as human psychology, and the first question we ask ourselves, are people basically good? Uh, are they um, born good but corrupted by the society that they're in? Or are they a mixture of good and evil? Or are they totally evil, attainted by original sin, let's say? Uh, another way of putting it, as the psychologists like to talk about it, it does nature or nurture determine our natures? Um, do we... Um, or we shape more by the way we're brought up, the environment we live in. Um, if you change the environment, can you change uh, human nature? Or is nature something pretty much fixed? This is a big issue that uh, we discuss when we deal with the issue of, uh, uh, of, of gay rights. Uh, there are, there's a school of thought now, uh, politically unpopular, that says, uh, Oh, it's the upbringing of people that makes them gay. So they can be, they are taught to be uh, gay, therefore they can get therapy and um, cease uh, and become heterosexual. It's just a, a choice that people have. Um, 
it's almost been inculcated into everybody's head that this is untrue, that nature determines whether a person is gay or not. And, not, and it is impossible to um, become anything other than gay. Um, why are people, however, when we take that same principle and try to apply it to, let's say, something like crime or poverty, uh, the politically correct thing to say is, well, poverty is caused by your environment. Um, well, uh, uh, that is, somebody is, grows up in a rotten environment, and uh, therefore they don't have certain advantages, and they're going to end up poor. It has nothing to do with decisions they make. It's just pure chance that determines uh, whether they're, they're going to be um, poor or not. So poverty is a, is a question of circumstances. Um, and um, uh, also, by redistributing the wealth, uh, we can take people who are poor and they will be re-socialized in such a way by, by giving them money to um, enjoy a better life and they'll spend money and uh, they'll enjoy the middle class style of life and poverty will cease to be uh, a, a problem. Um, so we'll deal with this kind of issue in, in many different variants. Uh, what is human nature? Uh, are we what we are because of our uh, society or culture we live in? Or is our nature fixed uh, and planted on us by virtue of our birth, uh, by our genes? The second um, issue that we'll deal with the courses and one of the most important is what is justice we'll keep coming back to this issue justice is perhaps one of the most fundamental of all issues um, because um, uh, it, it's, it lies at the basis of every decision that uh, we make um, justice deals with the issue of how do we determine who gets what, where, and when, and how? For example, how do I decide how grades are allocated in this class? Well, I've got to have some system of justice that we should all agree upon. Um, if I decide to give A's to people with green eyes as opposed to people with brown eyes, most people in the class would be pretty unhappy with that decision. Why? Uh, even if they had green eyes and were going to get an A, uh, they would think there was something arbitrary about that decision. Uh, it had nothing to do with merit uh, at all. It was just a question of, of luck. And that's why a lot of people believe that uh, our present economic system is not based on justice because whether you're poor or rich depends on your birth. Uh, if you're born into a wealthy family, you get all sorts of advantages over others. So therefore, there should be some system of redistribution of the wealth. However, a lot of people say, well, that's not just because you're taking from those who have and giving to those who have not, and they haven't really earned it. Um, so you have to appeal to a, a different kind of principle. Why should certain people be given benefits as opposed uh, to other people based on what principle? So we have to come up with a system of, of justice and class I decide to um, I set up certain standards for achievement in class. If you um, do well on, on examinations and demonstrate to me that you mastered the subject matter, you get a good grade. On the other hand, if you do not obey the class rules and uh, blow off the class and don't study for the class and don't seem to know one concept from another, then you get a lower grade. That, that seems fair to me. Therefore, it's just. Justice entails a kind of equality and fairness. Um, we like similar people should be treated in a similar manner. That seems to be pretty basic to, um, to justice. Uh, similarly situated people should be um, similarly treated. Um, what um, we complain about is um, if you are... Um, in the same situation as somebody else, and then um, see um, them 
get uh, greater rewards than you do.